Hey guys, what's going on? It's Drew, also known as Shred Rifts here. Um, just wanted to make a quick video about my pedal board, share with you some insight, some new ideas maybe that you may have not considered before. Essentially, I've got a, an, a Line 6 Helix here, I've got an Eventide H9, and then I've got a whole slew of really cool analog dirt boxes and delays and reverbs and stuff. So I wanted to just show you how I put all that stuff together. I think for a long time I was under the impression that you had to choose between either analog or digital, like which route do I take? But I think what you can do is you can combine the two for some really amazing tones slash ease of usability with your own personal rig. So um, basically I'm gonna show you some, some shots of the pedal board, explain kind of uh, everything that I possibly can about it. Hopefully I won't ramble too much today. So. Without further ado, let's take a look at this beast. All right, guys, so here's my board. I know, I know, it's a little excessive. It's kind of huge. Um, it sits on the uh, Pedal Train Terra 42, so like the biggest, I guess the longest board they make. Um, anyway, so I'll just start left to right. I'll explain each pedal and just try to keep it really short and sweet. If you want to do more research, uh, you've got Google at your disposal. So. Up in the left-hand corner, I've got my Jim Leahy pedal. Uh, it's got a picture of Jim Leahy on it. It's freaking awesome. Basically, the white LED that you see up there is going to be the Dumble preamp circuit. And that's what this row of knobs does right there. Um, I think I, I, I've used it in a previous video. So if you look at one of my lesson videos, you'll be able to hear a little bit more of that pedal. I think it's the economy picking video. The other uh, button over here, that's going to be um, like the blue LED. That's that's a Klon clone, essentially. So you've got a, a Klon running into a Dumble preamp circuit. Really, really freaking cool. Um, and then next to that, we've got the left-hand Wrath Deluxe. That is a Boss HM2 clone. Um, it's I wouldn't even really call it a clone, to be completely honest, because the stuff that he's done to that pedal has made it like so that it's not even really an HM2 anymore. So um, I also have a, a demo video of that one, of actually an older version of it. This is a custom orange one that he built for me. Uh, and then next to that is the Necronomicon Annihilation Machine Fuzz. I've got, a, I've got a demo video of that pedal as well, so if you wanna hear what that one sounds like. It's a germanium fuzz that does like 90 different things, so really cool. And then up here, we've got the Greer Amps Lightspeed Organic Overdrive, which there's plenty of videos on the internet of what that guy does, but I'm using it as a clean boost, so pretty freaking sick. Um, okay, and then over here, this other maybe somewhat unfamiliar pedal is the Fairfield Circuitry Meat Mod. It is an analog delay, bucket brigade delay. Um, really cool, really cool features. Does like basically lots of modulation, some modulation, no modulation. It's got a tone sweep if you want dark delays or bright delays. It's got a, this is a compression switch. Um, I've got it hooked up to this Ernie Ball pedal. And basically I'm able to control via CV uh, control, um, basically delay time and feedback. Um, okay, and then over here I've got a Mantic Proverb. Um, it's one of my favorite spring reverbs ever recorded, um, or ever, <laughs> that I've ever recorded with. Um, really, really great sounding pedal. And then next to that I've got the Alexander Space Expander Reverb. Really amazing sounding pedal. I like the analog mode. Um, it's basically an analog delay as well. And then the plate mode is, is insane as well. It also does spring, but I like this for spring, so that's why I got that there. Um, and then everything else on the board should be pretty familiar to you guys. Um, Eventide H9 Max and then a Line 6 Helix. So what what I think I, f I fell into the trap of was like that, okay, I'm going to have my analog rig and then I'm going to have my digital rig. I'm going to have the Helix for recording at the house, and then I'm gonna have my amp and all my cool pedals for like playing live shows and stuff. Um, but earlier this week, I just put everything together on one insane board. I've got MIDI hooked up uh, to these two guys, so they're communicating with each other, and I'm able to like 
change presets and things like that. Um, but just, just really amazing, um, tones coming out of this thing. So, uh, what I'm going to do in the next part of this video is just kind of walk you guys through how I have it set up. So I'll do that right now. So here we are at the Helix guys and essentially how I'm running this is with the four cable method. And if you don't know what that is, um, all you got to do is go to the Helix website. Um, if you just Google search Line 6 Helix, click the first thing that comes up. Then you're going to go to the blog portion of the page and you are going to find, I think it's like the third blog down and I, I think it, it, it's called the four cable method. I can't remember what the name of the blog is, but you'll be able to find it. It's like the third or fourth one down. And they have a nice, beautiful picture of how you can do this. Um, I'm not going to walk you through that right now, but just go to that blog. Um, but what it enables you to do is to use your existing tube amp, and you need an effects loop in your tube amp to do this, but it enables you to use the preamp section or not use the preamp section of your, your tube amp, and then you can use this knob on the Helix as your overall volume control which is super, super convenient. Um, and if you want to piss the sound guy off, you know, just put your foot on that thing and just keep turning it up. All right. So anyway, um, let me just go back home there. Okay. So, uh, four cable method, that's what I'm running. And then, okay. So over here through the front of, of that. So my guitar goes into my fuzz because the way that the fuzz and the HM2 interact with my guitar is like really like, like I can't run it. I can't get it to do the things that it does when I run it through a loop in the helix. So I just run my guitar into here, into the HM2 and then into my light speed boost. So that's, that's kind of my signal flow. Then that goes into the guitar input of the helix. And then the first loop of the helix is dedicated to uh, the preamp section of my orange rocker verb 100 that I'm using as like my power amp slash preamp. And then what I'm doing here is I'm toggling between those two with this button here. So let me just grab a guitar and I'll show you kind of what that sounds like. So, so that is, that's my orange tone. Let me turn all these effects off. And then if I want to um, trigger the the amp in in the helix, basically I'm using a divided by 13. Um, that's what that sounds like. So completely different frequency response. I think you can hear the difference. Really cool. Um, and and you could really you could put any. You could use a high gain um, patch. Uh, or you could use, you know, whatever clean, whatever thing you're going for. Um, and then basically I, I like the way my orange sounds. It's a really great amp, but for certain things, I'll trigger that other one. And it, it just like, it just speaks to a different thing. So, um, so that's what's going on. I'm using the four cable method. I've got some pedals going right, right before um, the, the front of this. And then um, everything else I've got running through loops in the Helix. So loop two is going to be um, my Jim Leahy pedal. It's an overdrive. And uh, so here's what that sounds like. It's got, it's got the even tide, so um, that's the H9. Okay, cool. And then loop four is these other three pedals over here. So, so basically, if you want to hear what the proverb and the meat mod sound like, it sounds like this. The other thing that's cool about running these these send return effects loop things is you can turn your trails on and off right here, which is 
just insane. So if I want my delays to trail over into my next patch or whatever, it will do that. And that's really, really freaking sweet. So um, the next portion of this video, we are going to talk about MIDI and how I hooked up the H9 to the Helix to basically trigger presets in the H9. Or I'm also going to I'm also going to show you how to bank up and down with the Helix so you don't have to run your foot all the way over here and, and jack around with all of these buttons that are super close together. Um, you get to use the beautiful large buttons of the Helix for that. So um, let's go ahead and do that next. All right guys, so um, we're back at the board here and now we're talking about um, how I've got this set up via MIDI. So. What, what I have this particular patch set up to do in the Helix, um, and what I mean by patch is just the overall, like, which one of these things am I doing? Um, so this particular one, it's called Muir because that's the name of my band, and that's honestly it, how I set this thing up. So I set it up for some of the things that I had in my head that I wanted to do um, so that I wouldn't have to press on like five different buttons just to get one tone. I can just do like one button or two buttons maybe. So, um, so what I have this doing is, is trick, it's triggering, like when I step on octave delays, it's triggering the H9 and it's taking it right to a, to a preset over here. So, and I, I've got my iPad linked up so you can see that it, it is like changing. Okay. And it's it's instantaneous. It takes an extra second or so to 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 go over to to go via Bluetooth to the iPad, but it is changing like really really quickly. So um, what you're gonna do is is run a MIDI cable uh, from the out, so MIDI out from the Helix to MIDI in into the H9, which is uh, over on the side there. So um, so that's pretty. Pretty cool, right? So um, one of the things that you're going to want to make sure you have set up is um, basically on your pedal, go to pedal in the uh, H9 control app, which I would recommend doing this via the app on your phone or on your iPad or on your Android, whatever you got, because trying to do it on the hardware right here is probably one of the most frustrating things I've ever attempted to do in my life. So um, that's exaggerating a little bit, but like, honestly, it's a thousand times easier on, on here. So do it on here. If you want to not get pissed off while you're trying to do this. So, um, what you're going to do is go to the pedal section of the app and then go to MIDI settings and then go to, um, assign MIDI messages. Uh, okay. So, um, what you're going to do is, Make sure your MIDI receive channel is set to either Omni or channel one. That's what I recommend doing. And then assign MIDI messages. Basically, it's a list of all the different things that your, your pedal can do, all of the different things you can trigger via MIDI. It's just a giant list. And then over here, you've got the exact MIDI message, like the number of, of what, that, what that's gonna do. So. Um, okay, so that's how you're going to have it set on the H9. Just set it to channel 1 or Omni, and then you'll be good. Okay, so then come over here to the Helix, <clears throat> and then what you're going to do is click on the button that has three lines on it, and then click Command Center. Okay, and um, you can go to a switch. Honestly, I've never really dicked around too much with these instant controls. I think that just like when you step on the patch, it goes right to... Uh, to whatever MIDI devices you have set up. So, um, so basically, I wanted this button right here to be my octave delay patch on the H9. So, how did I do that? The first thing I went to was was the bank program setting of of here. You can make it go to none or MIDI CC, um, but bank program was the one that I was the one that I used. Okay. So let me just let me just go home and then okay back to command center okay and then I selected MIDI channel 1 and then these two buttons here I just set to whatever the preset number on the H9 is so 
Um, I wanted to trigger preset 97, so I set both of these to 97, the bank CC00, bank CC32. And then the program, for whatever reason, the problem that I ran into was that you have to have the program minus one of whatever preset you're going for. And honestly, I just discovered that trial by error. So uh, I made a lot of mistakes and then I finally got it right. So that's, that's how I made it work for me. Um, and that's how I'm able to trigger all of my favorite, um, my favorite H9 sounds, basically, with, with that. So... Cool, but that's not the only thing you can do. You can also uh, you can also trigger your tap tempo so that so that um, the tap tempo button down here on the Helix is the tap tempo button um, basically to sync your taps with uh, with the H9. So let me just show you how to do that. Um, let's see. You're gonna go there, back to the command center, and you're gonna go down here. So um, Instead of going to the bank preset thing, you're gonna go to um, MIDI CC command. Okay, so you're gonna go to that, make sure channel one is selected, and then you can assign any CC number. Um, it could be number one, it could be number two, it could be number 30. I just chose 30 because uh, that's just the number I arrived at. And then crank that value up to 127, otherwise it won't do anything, okay? Um, okay, so now in your H9 control app, let me just back out here. You're going to go to the assign MIDI CC messages to pedal function and then just find that tap tempo line. It's right here. And then see how it says MIDI CC 30. That is, um, basically you're going to go in there and you can change it. You can, you can adjust it. But MIDI CC 30 is the one that I that I've got there. So you're just going to match them. Make sure if if on the command center it says five, make sure in the app it says five. And then once you have it set, it's set. So now you can see I've got my tap tempo set. So if I want to do 1400 milliseconds or whatever, you know I can do that. Or if I want it to be really quick. I can do that. So, um, so that's how you're going to do that. Okay. So there's one other MIDI uh, control thing that I found to be useful, at least for the the type of music that I play and how I have it set up, and that is having the ability to bank up and down. Okay. So um, if you look here, I have that set to bank down and bank up and then active. So in this patch. You can see I've got, I'm able to activate or deactivate the pedal. So um, what you're going to do is go back to the command center and um, let's see here. So to get it to bank down, okay, you're going to go back to, to make making sure that it's set to MIDI CC under the command knob. We're back at MIDI channel one. That's the channel that I got it to work on and then the CC number I set to three. So same thing like we did before, if you have it set to CC number three in the Helix, set it to uh, CC number three in the app. So um, to get it to bank down, I used um, the, the decrement preset thing here, okay? So I just set that value to three. And then to get it to bank up, same, same concept, uh, I just assigned it to, to MIDI CC4. So you can see over here we're banking down and now we're banking up. Okay? And then to, to get it to activate, I set, it, I set an activate button over here. I think I used CC value 5 for that one. So uh, all you got to do is find out where it says activate and uh, there you go. So um, there's there's obviously a ton of other ways to to use this technology, and um, there's so many other ways you could set it up to do things. Um, but this is just this is how I have it set. So hopefully that helped a little bit, guys. And um, stay tuned for more videos in the future. Thank you so much.